Okay, this is not the first video that you've seen, nor will it be the last, I'm sure. However, I was asked if I would give an opinion. It's been a while, so here's my opinion on the future of the Microsoft Surface Duo. Now, I've included the patent that Microsoft has filed for a foldable device. And it's a foldable device that will fold all the way back. I included it because obviously if they have filed this patent, that means they are seriously considering it. Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to make it or produce it, I should say. Certainly, they will make some. Whether they will produce them and release them is another question. But the patent hits closely to what I would like to see. Now, I know a lot of people like the two-screen duo device. And I've seen people talk about how if they go to a foldable, they'll abandon the product, which really makes no sense because if there's no other dual screen devices and you want the abilities that are delivered here, then you're not going to abandon the uh, platform. Now you might decide to jump over to Samsung or if Google releases something but what's the difference the first main difference between a duo and those products well let me get some devices here and this is closed and this is an s21 ultra but what you see as a difference is a slightly get my hand out of the way what you see as a difference is a slightly wider device and for me that's one of the biggest features so I do not want to lose that I like that ability that if I decide to fold it and read that um, have this width and actually when two apps are open I still like having that width it gives me more area to work with and to write so I don't see people abandoning it what makes these dual screen devices work and foldables are jetpack libraries and they're both going to function the same and the only thing that you're missing is a physical gap which can be 100 percent emulated in software and on the back side you're still going to have this hinge here so <laughs> what's the big deal the fact that you can't look through it I don't know so let's get back to this so what we have here is a more common device what we have here is a more unique device and unique is not always good unique is good if it can be very very different but yet have features or functions that can pull people to it and thus capture market share until market share is captured unique trying to play in the same space may not work out so well in our space this is going to boil right down to applications and how well applications work on a dual screen device versus a foldable device we're already seeing the problems with that foldable apps and the developers they could care less about a dual screen and they're just designing their apps to work on one big screen 
not worrying about that gap in the middle because they don't have a gap to worry about. So their panes that they put in can be any width, which can force a pane to cross over from one screen to another over the gap, causing you to lose data, distort things. So because of that and the fact that apps will be developed for foldables and not for dual screen devices, it's an advantage to us that our device goes foldable. Thus, we will be able to capture all apps. All apps will work, no matter whether they're written dual screen or foldable, they'll work. And what's very common is that people see video loses pixels as it spans across. Now, granted, the Netflix user is not a Microsoft target for this device. However, videos are watched by the target audience. So be it a training video that maybe uh, someone has to watch to learn how to fix something or do something and they want to span it across both screens, they don't want to lose pixels either. So it can help the business traveler that wants to watch Netflix it can also help the business person who wants to watch a video for training. So that's an advantage and one of the reasons I would like to move away from dual screen. Of course, the dual screen is more reliable than foldable. So that's going to have to be addressed. And hopefully it is. That technology is evolving. So that's the first thing the second thing is since we're talking screen is bezel i would like to see less bezel whatever can be done to maintain good gesture control but use more of the space i would like to see that happen uh, the borders just are not appe uh, appealing to me again from a visual and what we're looking at, we've got to update Launcher. And not just make Launcher equal to Launcher on other Android phones, but give it a new UI. I want to see a Windows 11-ish UI on it. So for me, I think if I can fold it out and I've got one nice screen laid across, it's going to be like looking up at that monitor and only it's a little bit smaller. Great. Um, along those lines, I want real continuum. So continuum, if you're not aware, was a technology that we had with Windows 10 Mobile and that's where we could work on an app let's say Microsoft Word and then we could connect up to a monitor and once connected to the monitor the Lumia detected that and the application went from being a compact mobile app to a full version of the app and to do that we had to have what were called UWP apps and uh, those were targeted to be able to run anywhere we don't have that concept in Android but that's okay uh, something can be done with that Microsoft uh, but I want to be able to do that without having an internet connection. Workspaces are going to be too expensive for many of the users. Yes, people in large corporations using Azure may be able to have workspaces, but those that don't, you can't buy that. You can't justify that. And then to use just a PC that is sitting somewhere 
internet connected um, again maybe not uh, an ideal situation some businesses will not allow even VPN into their facilities so you wouldn't be able to go into say some server there that is or some PC there that you can work from so this remote desktop option while I appreciate that you've improved remote desktop through using this capability. Uh, it's not a desktop. And, you know, since we can't potentially get workspaces, maybe you have another kind of workspace that uh, remote desktop can get into. Uh, if you can't go ahead and give us a, a true desktop experience where all we need is a monitor and we don't need any uh, connectivity then maybe you do something with the office app to where it can connect to OneDrive, SharePoint, you know, etc. and grab data from there and work with it and put it back. So maybe that's something you're working on. We need something. So this could fit into a Microsoft 365 business account and should fit into even the smallest account. You have web-based apps, etc., that you offer. Kind of find a way to make that a workspace that remote desktop can get into or we can get into with the Office app through the desktop function. So a true desktop experience at a minimum giving us that continuum experience so that we don't have to worry about network connectivity. Now network connectivity again I know is becoming more and more available but unless you come up with some better workspace pricing this just isn't going to work. Now let's talk some a bit about the hardware. Obviously we want the hardware to include latest CPU, latest GPU. We would like to have the highest possible refresh on the screens, 120 hertz or better, if you can do it. But along those lines, we want to see some changes with the camera. Now, I'm okay with the camera bump. It would be great if we could do without it. something like this how you do that and still allow us to have a great camera I don't know uh, that's up to you to figure out one suggestion is to add another USB connection and allow us to have a module a camera module that we can slide on up here when we need it now that's another piece of hardware but one it could lessen the cost of the initial product and those that don't want it maybe you build in some kind of nice decent um, uh, camera that is similar to a selfie camera but then allow us to add on a camera module snap in make it USB type C so that other makers might be able to adapt something that would work. Does it need to be more than three cameras? You know, it would be great if we had this kind of option here, S21 Ultra, but not terribly important. Um, give me a better sensor. Give me the best sensor that's out there. That's what you need to do. <laughs> put, a, put a great sensor in there. So give me a better sensor. Beat this one in megapixel. I want to be able to zoom in, crop, if you will, and still have good resolution. And I don't want this just for taking pictures of food or trees or dogs. I want it to be able to take pictures of machinery, of documents, of 
just whatever uh, I need in my normal business life. So, better camera. Yes, this camera's okay. You can do better. Some people want an outside screen. Really, I don't. If it comes, so be it. But I like the fact that you can close the device and you're done. It's kind of a sign that, like a book, you can walk away from it and then come back later. Get rid of the glass. I don't like it on the back. I don't like it. It's one of the reasons I have a skin on because the device is very slick. Now, I don't have my OtterBox on right now because I don't need it, but it'll be going back on soon. Right here. Microsoft makes something like this. Even if you have to work with OtterBox to do it, without the screen protector here, make this. But make something like this that gives us good drop protection and have it available when the device ships. In some manner, how about giving us some magnetic capability here? Now, I don't know what's the best thing to do. I don't want the, the surface connector. I want to maintain the ability to use a type C cable unless the surface connector could have a type C connection on it the problem of course is going to be if you lose a connector damage the connector and that takes us to could you possibly do something with these these magnetic connectors. I've been thinking could you build this connector in to the device and then we have these. I don't know. Something along those lines would be good. I do find that because the device is so thin the more inserting and removing of a cable the more damage you do. I have still have my connect my no breakage even of the original duo but because this one can have this this one cannot when I have this on so something do something there make this better now in doing away with the glass I'm okay if you go polycarbonate I'm all right with that give us some options see if you can make that polycarbonate removable so that people could change up like we did on the Lumias that may be not premium enough for the surface people then you know what extrude the same material that you're using for a surface pro use that material i'm okay with that and if it made the device a little heavier i'm okay with that the main things and if this device grew by a couple of millimeters to adapt this into it I'm okay with that. Okay, so tell me what you think. If you like these ideas or do you have your own ideas? Then I'll probably do another one of these. Mainly the changes that I want to see as noted are an extreme. You tell me if you found this video useful, informative, give it a thumbs up like it share it hey if it was good enough and you see other content here that you like subscribe and most of all thanks for watching